Captain Jonathan West reporting for duty, sir. Very glad to see you, John. So you finally managed to escape headquarters for a little real soldiering. Took a bit of doing, but I got my transfer, sir. Dispatches from New York. I told the general I was pining away from my old commander. The last time I saw your old commander, she was with Lieutenant Hunter. I'll go pay my respects, sir. Do so. Join us later. Thank you, sir. You must be getting cool out here, Miss Thorne. Would you care to dance? I'd love to. John! How marvelous. Miraculous is a word for you, Marion. Oh, you know Lieutenant Hunter. Only by necessity. How are you, Hunter? I was feeling splendidly, thanks. A moment ago. Then run along and see your doctor. Rank does have its privileges, you know. Oh, yes. You'll pardon me, Miss Thorne. If we go someplace, it's a bit less crowded. This way, Captain. How did you ever manage to tear yourself away from the gaiety of New York? Gaiety? It's been absolute desolation without you. Steady, John. That was a greeting, not a surrender. Sorry. I was hoping that absence had made the heart grow fonder. Oh, but it has. At least enough to be very glad to see you. Well, that's something. Tell me, uh, how's my esteemed superior, your father? The Colonel has a second battalion at Fort Williams. And I'm going to spend the summer with him. That's hardly my idea of a summer resort. Now, if we were in England... John, you think the sun rises and sets in that little island of ours? Well, doesn't it? John, you're utterly hopeless. <laughs> This is a wonderful country. Something's happening over here that hasn't happened anywhere else for centuries. Men are carving out a new empire. Uh -huh. Sounds like chapter one of the new book you're writing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can argue with beauty alone, but beauty plus literary genius leaves me absolutely helpless. Your attention, please. Attention, please. Sorry to interrupt the festivities. Staff officers report at once to General Johnson's office. Carry on. Robbie. Looks like action at last. You knew it. Yes, I brought the dispatches. Seems you're going to have to fight for America, whether you like it or not. My dear, if you like it so well, it must be worth fighting for. I have just received word that General Montcalm is assembling troops and his Indian allies, the Hurons and Ottawa's, at the border. Well, gentlemen, we shall at least have the honor of pitting ourselves against a great soldier. Now we look at the map. As always, we may expect a thrust southward from Montreal, and their first objective may well be our outpost at Crown Point. Plainly, our first move is to reinforce the Crown Point garrison. Well, have we time to do it from here, sir? Montcalm could reach Crown Point in ten days. Dixon. Prepare a dispatch for Colonel Thorne at Fort Williams, ordering him to send troops at once to the support of Crown Point. Very well, sir. Colonel. Sir. Choose a dispatch rider who knows the Iroquois Trail to Fort Williams. Yes, sir. Now, we'll scout the territory north to Lake Champlain, following the trail just east of Lake George and Fort William Henry. At this point here, the scout should cut west off the trail. Sergeant Tom Cutler reporting, sir. Uh, Cutler? You know the Iroquois Trail to Fort Williams? Yes, sir. It goes right by my mother's place, above Waterville. This dispatch is of vital importance. Don't let it fall into enemy hands. No, sir. You will have company part of the way. Gertie, Ogana. You will ride with Cutler as far as the junction of the Iroquois Trail and the River Road. Then, scout to the north along Lake Champlain. Get going, then. Thank you, sir. Whoever you are. Don't shoot, ma'am. I surrender. Matt! 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 Oh, oh Mars. I thought it was Tom, but if I should have known it was you, Tommy never could hit that iron twice in a row. Oh, Ma, it's so good to see you. And to find you spry and worry as ever. A lot you care, rampaging over the wilderness year after year. Now, Ma, you know I care. 
No shoot. Me friend. Ma, I want you to meet my tribal brother and trapping partner, Sagamore. How? Any friend of my son's is a friend of mine. <laughs> Welcome to my house, Sagamore. <laughs> <laughs> Good medicine, mother of Hawkeye. Hawkeye? Oh, Ma, that, that's the name the Delawares gave me when they took me in the tribe. Oh. Hawkeye Long Gun saved life. Fight with Huron. It wasn't anything, Ma. Where's Tommy? In the Army. Army? Yes. Scouting and carrying dispatches. Why, it isn't possible, Ma. He's, he's just a kid. Oh, you forget. You've been gone over two years this time. Tommy's 19 and a man grown. But I was hoping this time you'd stay long enough for the right gal to come along and knock that wilderness moonshine out of your head. Well, Ma, I still haven't run across a gal I'd give a good weasel skin for. <laughs> Score make Hawkeye run away like deer. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sagamore, <laughs> you better sort these pelts and get them cleaned up. Tommy, my kid brother, in uniform. And a fine-looking soldier he makes, doesn't he? He sent it to me from Albany. Tell you what, Ma. I'll sell these furs to the Glen Falls trader and we'll all go to Albany. Albany? I haven't seen it in 30 years. Well, I've never been there in a one or two till now. But we'll all go down there for a real get-together with Tommy. Come on, Simon. Well? Well, here's where you leave us, son. Our cabin's just the other side of the wood patch. Too bad I can't treat you fellas to some of Ma's cooking. There's no stop on this trip. That's right. And don't let nobody take that dispatch from you. I won't. If the Frenchies want it, they'll have to shoot me first. Come on, boy. You got the right idea. They'll think the French Hurons did it. Behind trees, far off. Good. And they didn't get a good look at us either. Here, take this mouth to the French general. I'll have to go back and cover up our tracks before whoever jumped us has a chance to talk. Pick me up in Waterville on your way back. Get moving. All right, yeah. Work, Lieutenant, up the trailer ways. One of our dispatch riders, Sergeant Tom Cutler. I caught him turning over his dispatch to one of Montcalm's Hurons. Oh. Hope you got him. No, sir. The engine got away with the dispatch. I tried to take Cutler in charge, but he drew on me and I had to shoot him. Is he dead? I don't think so, sir. I figured I'd push on and send a report to General Johnson. Oh. Very well, I'll look into this. Hi, up. done all we can, with no doctor this side of Albany. He's young and strong, Ma. Nature's the best doctor I know. You're on talk on knife. 
couldn't make it out. It's a Huron favorite son, Manhattu. Huron knife, eh? Maybe it belonged to a Huron he'd killed. No. Red man, no carry, enemy knife. Tomahawk. Bad medicine. I'll carry it. And Gertie. Tommy, it's me, Nat. Sam, Gertie was one of them. And the other one. Take it easy, lad. Easy. Don't force yourself. Sergeant Tom Cutler here. Yes. Who are you? Nat Cutler, his brother. Well, at least you're not obstructing the King's justice. I reckon that'll need some explaining, Lieutenant. Your brother was carrying an important dispatch. He was seen giving it to an enemy Indian. A simple case of espionage. That can't be. His own father was killed by the French in Urans. Sorry, Matt, but if he's able to travel, I'd have to take him in charge. Mother. Mother. Tommy. Now go, please. Yes, ma'am. As soon as I make sure he is dead. You won't touch him. Get out. Steady, Ma. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> the lieutenant's just doing his duty as he sees it. Tommy dealing with the Indians. The man who tried to arrest him enlisted scout Sam Gertie. He was forced to shoot him in self-defense. Where's Gertie now? I don't know. What's the idea of that? Sorry. But as a man wanted for a crime against the Crown, he's not entitled to military honors. Not entitled to military honors. sharp like knife. Make young geese believe big lie. Yeah. There's always a bit of true talk in the biggest lie a man can think of. Gertie tells the red coach he saw Tommy give the dispatch to an enemy Indian. Now the way I figured, that's just what Gertie did himself. Where we find Gertie? I don't know. Better they don't see us together. Maybe they caught sight of us back in the woods. Good. We make camp by river each night. Right. I'll trail him through every settlement between here and Waterville. I could find a fellow by the name of Sam Gertie. You ain't got far to look. That lucky loudmouth that's got the dice now is your man. Thanks, friend. <laughs> Sir, aren't you getting the dice? There's my money. Pop it down, my lucky lads. The more you put down, the more I pick up. 
Pardon me, sir, but that was my point. <laughs> Everybody wins tonight. Place your bets. I want to be covered all around the table. Pop it. And a sweet 16. Pop it down, my lucky lads. The more you put down, the more I pick up. There's no stopping me tonight. What's the matter with you, sir? Aren't you betting? Is your name Sam Gurney? None other. I have some news for you. From the north. I'll join you at the door. Right. Keep the ivories warm for me, gents. I'll be right back. from the north, you say? Well, speak up, man. Oh, it ain't me that has it. It's a wounded Indian in the stable. Show me. But stay in front. Ain't you, Sam? What's your game? Where's your wounded Indian? Maybe he's still up north with the French. Ah, so you're expecting him back, eh, Gertie? Who are you? Name's Cutler. Nat Cutler. Brother of the boy you shot down on the Iroquois Trail. Gertie, he wasn't quite dead. Lived long enough to do some talking. Corporal, wait outside. Your brother was a spy. And the patrol officer that knows it has just ridden in. Put your rifle away, Cutler, or I'll drop you where you stand. Start back, Gertie. I'm taking you out to that patrol. Put down your arms, Cutler. You should know better than to point a weapon at a king's officer. Sorry, Lieutenant, I can't accommodate you. Oh, stop that man! Stop it! Now there's only one trail left. You're on. I had him figured right, Sagamore. Gertie was waiting for him at Waterville. We'll wait here and trail him. All Yengi's army. Look, you. Well, that's a chance I'll have to take. He had about 150 miles to go, most of it afoot. Mm. If he's a good runner, he can make about 35 to 40 miles a day. Mm. Come on. He should be hitting the French camp long about now. Oh? Oui, mon général. 14 smiles on us. This dispatch never reached Fort Williams. And Crown Point remains unsupported. It is ours for the asking. Baron, we move down Lake Champlain at daybreak. Arrangez cela. Bien, mon général. Morgana, you've done well. When this is over, you'll be handsomely rewarded. Morgana, great Huron chief. Yengis, Mohawks, kill my people. My reward come in battle. Aranya. 
Your own brother. Ogana, speak truth. Here. No more will Yangis burn wigwam, kill squaw, kill brother. Great spirit, Manitou, smile on us. Ogana lead you many Yangis scalp. <laughs> our man, all right. Now we'll see where he goes when he finds out Gertie is dead. I could sure use that hundred pounds, all right. So could I. I wonder what this cutler looks like. Don't know, but I hear tell he's short and thick set with black hair and one dark eye. One dark eye, huh? Yeah. Well, that's something to go on. Thanks for the tip, friend. Oh, man. What did you find out? Make talk him. Name Ogana. Mohawk scout. Yengeese. Mohawk? He fool Yengeese. Mohawk, you're in dog, all same. You're quiet. Look same. Talk same. Somewhere in that headquarter outfit is the man we want most of all. The man who gives Ogana his orders. Mm. General. Ogana has just returned from scouting Lake Champlain. He's brought bad news. General Montcalm has taken Crown Point without a struggle. This confirms Lieutenant Blakely's report. That we were betrayed by Sergeant Cutler and his brother. Apparently these colonials are not to be trusted, sir. Ogana, can you tell us the strength of Montcalm's forces? Many soldier, many Huron, big gun on lake in boat. Nixon, you'll proceed with the 1st Battalion of the 83rd and the colonials to reinforce Fort Williams. Sound the assembly and prepare to march at once. Ogana, John. Sir. I'm assigning you to your old post as second in command at Fort Williams. Thank you, sir. I've just heard the news, General. It doesn't give me much time to pack, but I'll be Marion, you don't intend to go to Fort Williams now? Well, of course. My place is with my father. This isn't my first campaign. John, you'll want to return to the Colonel as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Ogana will take you and Marion by the Iroquois Trail. It's two days shorter than the wagon road the army will have to use. Oh, that'll be wonderful. I'll go and get ready. Ogana. Ogana, if you start at once, can you get Miss Thorne and Captain West to Fort Williams, second day? Two moon. Good. Go make arrangements. John. Here is the real reason for speed. A plan for an immediate campaign against Crown Point. After our recent experience, I would not trust these orders to anyone but you. Thank you, sir. Hey, What's the rumpus, friend? The Frenchies have took Crown Point and we're marching north. We'll show them. You'll show them? He ain't so patriotic. He just don't want to see him go to work. I know you have it. 
Looks like I'm gonna have to join up, Sagamore, if I'm to keep on Ogana's trail. Look, we go. Your warpath, my warpath. Me only brother you got now. Right, Sagamore. Packet, Ashley. Get a pack horse, you two. Load it with a small tent and supplies for two days. Organa is taking Captain West and Miss Thorne the short way to Fort Williams, and you ought to accompany them. On foot? <laughs> what else? You're a woodsman, aren't you? Get going. Walk all the way from here to Fort Williams on 20 shillings a month? <laughs> Not us. We got a ride in the wagon. Better get yourself a cup of new boys. The nerve of these officers. Sagamore, maybe we can get that job. You men, we want to get started. Yes, sir. Ogana, you feel you can trust these men? Not, no. Well, now, Captain, they say every man has his price. Nobody's offered me mine yet. From what I've seen of you colonials, it wouldn't be very high. Well, perhaps you do. But understand, Ogana's our scout. You take your orders from him. Oh, that'll be all right with us, Captain. We'll be glad to just tag along wherever Ogana leads us. Go now. Make camp. River. By moon. Right you are. If you're not too tired, my dear. Tired after all that invigorating cornbread? <laughs> Quite so. Nevertheless, I hope we have something besides cornbread for supper. Oh, sure. What, for instance? How would you like some nice fried cornmeal mush with a little molasses on it? Good heavens. If I ever see a leg of mutton again, I'll salute it. Go now. <laughs> Ogana, stay. Put out fire. Right, you are. All right, Hawkeye. You lead the way. You and the Delaware. Well, Sagamore can take you along, Captain. I'll help Ogana pack. Oh, no, not need help. You go. All right, Hawkeye. Let's get moving. Right, sir. Ready, darling? Olive Lane? Hardly that. Just a few memory notes on the day's journey. I didn't know a day in the saddle could be so tiring. Mm. Those rough up and down trails aren't like Hyde Park, are they? <laughs> and a full day's ride again tomorrow. Maybe not ride horse tomorrow. Ogana leave canoe by shore last time. Ogana get canoe. A canoe? How would that help, Ogana? Trail follow river. Captain, lady, come with Ogana. 
Hawkeye, Delaware, bring horses by shore. Well, that sounds wonderful, Ogana. That's a splendid idea. Now, if our indefatigable woodsman, Mr. Hawkeye, will have something besides cornbread for supper. Well, I was just planning to, Captain. How does a nice mess of trout sound to you? Like manna from heaven. Get the fish line, Sagamore. There won't be any fish around here. It's too shallow. Sagamore and me will push along down the river till we find deeper water. A runner to Montcalm. Mm. Jago, Jagone, Hakosh, Montcalm. Aranya. Me stop him. No. He's got nothing on paper. There's no use showing our hand to again until we can prove something. Take prisoner. Red coat to Montcalm. Girl to village. Mine. Anya! Yaksa! Very well, my dear. I'll admit everything you claim for it. The forest and the streams are beautiful. The hills magnificent. And the mosquitoes, the biggest, the most bloodthirsty I've ever encountered. Oh, John, you'd complain about paradise. Not if you were there. So you have doubts about my ultimate destination? <laughs> no, my angel. Only my own. Here, at least we can have some tea while we wait for Mr. Hawkeye's fish supper. Thank you. Don't shoot. He's giving the peace sign. They may be friendly. Stand where you are. Oh, hawks. Friends of Yangis. Come in peace. What do you want here? We hunting party. Long time away from village. Very hungry. Saw smoke. Maybe you give food. They're Hurons! <laughs> Burning metals, Captain. A scalp's the same thing to him. Yes, you take him yourself, I'd wager, like most of you backwoods savages. He just saved our lives. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be ungrateful. But there's something rotten about this whole thing. Why, Captain, you surprise me. I reckon that'll do for now, ma'am. Thank you, Hawker. Shall we strike camp, sir? Can't very well stay here. We'll have to push on while there's still daylight. On the same trail? Why not? Well, five Hurons around here, I mean 25 a little further on. Are you suggesting that we abandon the shortcut to the fort? I sure am, sir. We better pack up and hightail it across country to the wagon road. I've got important dispatches to get the Colonel Thorne the quickest way possible. Look, it's better to get him there two days late than not at all, sir. Ogana, what's your opinion? Ogana, say take canoe. Right, get the canoe ready. Hold it, Ogana. You can't take chances like this. Why, if there are any more Hurons, just on the river, you'll find them. Stand aside, Hawkeye. Those are my orders. What is it? Hold it. He's just keeping you from throwing your lives away. I'll have you caught, Marshal, for that. John, he's only trying to help us. I'm not sure any colonial wants to help us. 
You heard the lady, Captain. Let's get moving. We're having bad luck with General Johnson's dispatches, gentlemen. The first one fails to reach us, and we lose Crown Point. Time to give to your Mr. Hawkeye's colonial stubbornness. There's one bit of strategy in the General's plan, gentlemen, and we still have time to put into operation. A night march by the 1st Colonial Battalion, set up an ambush. There's a spot called Rocky Ridge, where 200 men can give the Frenchman and his heathens a royal working over. You're on a knife. Bad medicine. Sagamore, we're no nearer now to finding the man who gives the orders than we were in Albany. Maybe Ogana work alone. No, it ain't likely. Ogana is just a messenger. The man who sent him to get the captain's dispatch is the man who ordered Tommy killed. Ogana Scout River, 10 mile. Safe. That should give you a good start, Major. Proceed with the battalion. Right, sir. Colonials! Fall in! Right face! Fight. Colonials are going out on a night march. And Ogana's been out scouting for them. Ogana, like fox, make trails safe for chickens. Soon, nothing left. Feathers. Yeah. Captain? I'd like permission to join the Colonial Battalion, sir. Speak to Captain Brownell. You're under his orders from now on. Well, sir? You signed on as a scout, Hawkeye, not an infantryman. I know, sir, but we joined up to see action. They're going into it. They're my people, sir, and I'd like to be with them. Oh, I can understand that, Hawkeye. But two more rifles with the Colonials won't mean much, and we're short of good woodsmen like yourself in the Delaware. No, you're more valuable here. Stand by for further orders. Hey! Orders, Sagamore. Military orders. Rules and regulations.
Looks like we're too late. Get back! Ambush! Get back! Where's your battalion? Captain, where are they, battalion? Parnell, see that these men get medical attention. You and you come with me to Colonel Thorne's office. Two men, step forward. This was no mere mischance, gentlemen. The French set up an ambush on the very spot our colonials intended to occupy. There can be no doubt they knew our plan in advance. You left the fort in violation of orders for the avowed purpose of joining your fellow colonials. Yet you never caught up with them. How do you account for that? The battalion had a good head start on us, Colonel. They went straight up the riverbank. We had a circle through the forest. Then we ran into an ambush of our own. Looks like the Hurons were expecting us too. You knew that Ogana had made a preliminary scout for the colonials. Are you trying to throw suspicion on his loyalty? I wouldn't think of it, Lieutenant. All I'm saying is, if the Sagamore and me had gone scouting for the Colonials tonight, this ambush wouldn't have happened. Sir, on the face of it, this man's record is against him. He appeared with his Indian out of nowhere, delayed the delivery of my dispatches, went over the wall against orders, and admits contacting enemy Indians in the forest before the Colonials were ambushed. Captain West has stated the case very clearly, Hawkeye. As against Ogana's long record of faithful service, the weight of suspicion rests upon you. Pending further investigation, you're restricted to the fort area. Double the sentries on the wall, with orders to shoot if this man or the Delaware attempt to leave the fort again. That's all. You may go. Sir, these men should be put in irons. No direct evidence against them, John. And if we jailed every colonial who disobeyed orders, we'd have more prisoners than troops. I couldn't sleep and was working on my notes when they took you to headquarters. I've just been talking to Father and Captain West. And you're still talking to me? They wouldn't like that, ma'am. Can you blame them? You've done everything you could to make them doubt you. Insubordination, violation of orders. That ain't a new book of Army rules and regulations you're writing, is it, ma'am? I've had enough of that thrown at me for one night. As a matter of fact, I think Father was very lenient with you. Oh, really? Well, men have been shot for violating orders in time of war. And tonight, 200 men were killed for obeying them. That's not true. No one knew the battalion was marching into an ambush. French and Hurons knew it. And I knew it. You knew it? Well, not exactly. There are things a man can know, but he, he can't prove or talk about. You're holding something back, Hawkeye. That's possible. Then how do you expect to clear yourself unless you tell all you know? Men have also been shot for that, ma'am. Montcalm is knocking at our door. We'll give him a warm reception. Take your posts. I will move to the right rail. Quick, Sam. I can't fire by division. Division, take ready. Oh, 
Prepare for the left flank. Très bien, mon général. Captain, you are not artillery, but out of commission. Where you are, sir? Stand many more days of this. If they're to be killed, they're too many. If they're to fight, they're too few. I wish we had those colonials back to help us make a fight of it. Or to die all over again. Sir, it's strange we don't hear from General Johnson about those reinforcements. I've tried three times to get a dispatch rider through to him. It begins to look as though none of them got through. I'm afraid it does, sir. Colonel. The water system has given way under the shelling and flooded the powder magazine. How much powder have we above ground? One keg, sir. One keg? Not enough to repel one assault, if Montcalm only knew it. We'll have to take every precaution against more treachery, sir. Is it as bad as he says, Father? If the Frenchman knew how bad, my dear, he'd give his gunners no rest. Not only saw our flag come down. England's enemies have grown old and died waiting for that. Good girl. Squaw fever. Squaw fever. <laughs> Colonel, they're shooting at something unusual in the water. Not hearing from you, sir. General Johnson ordered the Grenadiers to Fort Edward. They sent us forward to find out if you needed support. We ran into the Hurons and had to take to the water, sir. With the Grenadiers only two days away, we have a chance. If we can only get word to them. An Indian might get through the Hurons, sir. Oh, gun is the only one we can trust, sir. Brownell, start him out the moment it gets dark. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Blakely, how many troops are there with General Johnson? Full complement, sir. Ogana! The Colonel wants you to make a try to reach Fort Edward for reinforcements. You better come with me and check out your equipment. Sagamore, if that Huron gets out of here tonight, everybody in this fort is doomed. Hmm. This is your most important mission, Ogana. There must be no mistakes. Repeat what you are to tell them. No gunpowder. One attack. Take fort. That's it. Well, bon voyage. Give my compliments to my old commander, Mon General Montalm, and tell him that I shall be waiting in the forest to lead my old company of the 5th Regiment in the attack. Alanya. Hold it, Ogana. Take his gun. Get back in there fast. Move. Down those steps, Ogana, fast. Watch him here, Sagamore. I hope you have a reasonable explanation for this, Hawkeye. Sorry, Captain. But I couldn't let that Huron leave the fort before you heard me out. Huron? That's right, sir. A Huron and a spy from Montcalm. The Sagamore and I have seen him contact enemy Hurons. Were you near enough to hear what was said? Uh, no, sir. That doesn't prove anything, Hawkeye. Organa's great value as a scout has rested on his ability to pass himself off as a Huron among Hurons. And as a Mohawk among the English. Now look, men! Colonel Thorne has given Ogana instructions to go on an important mission, and you're delaying him. I must order you to stand back and let him go on his way. Captain, we 
Before I let that Huron devil up those steps, I'll shoot him and take what comes. If that's the way you feel about it, why haven't you spoken before? Because I'm... Because I'm that Cutler. The Sagamore and I have seen O'Gana and Gertie at the body of my brother Tom, after they shot him and stole his dispatch. And here's a Huron knife I shot out of O'Gana's hand. Nat Cutler, huh? Yes. Do you think I'd tell you who I am if I wasn't sure about O'Gana? I'm taking O'Gana upstairs. Come on, Cutler! We're not going anywhere. You seem to forget you're wanted, dead or alive. Good man, Ogana. On your way. The man who gives the orders. I stand where you are. Out of my way, Captain. I've got to stop Organa. You're stopping no one. You're under arrest. Captain, this is Nat Cutler. Cutler, eh? This calls for a court martial. Take them both to Colonel Thorne. Move. Mon General, one hour of concentrated shelling while we take position, then an assault from three sides. No, Baron. If their situation is as bad as Organa reports, there is no need for further bloodshed on either side. The guard, at dawn, will approach the fort under the flag of truce. Tell them that we are fully aware of the extremity and offer honorable terms of surrender. Oui, mon général. Something bothering you, Organa? Many Huron warrior die. Want Yengi scalp? No, my son. When your Hurons meet the Mohawks as we march on Albany, they may take all the scalps they want. But I'll have no massacre of white men and women. Is that understood? Word of white father, law. If Yengis make surrender, you're on warrior, not get rifle, no prisoner, no scalp. Many you're on warrior killed. Ask great spirit why. Ogana say, not wait like squaw for pale face talk. Burn fort, take many scalp. Kill! 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 Well, this ought to make great writing for your book, ma'am. A visit to the condemned men just before the hanging. When you talk like that, you almost make me feel Captain West was right about you all along. Sure, ma'am. Just an ignorant colonial backwoodsman. Oh, stop it, Hawkeye. I didn't come here to listen to sarcasm. I'm beginning to wonder why you troubled to come here at all. I came be because I don't want my father to participate in a great injustice if I can help it. Don't tell me you believe my story. I didn't say that. I do think they might have given you a chance to prove it. Well, O'Gana's the only man that can prove it. And I ain't likely to get any help from him. Look, ma'am, it's getting pretty late. It's almost done.
least it's been a big help you're coming to coming to see me. You'd better run along now, ma'am. Please. It's a massacre. This is a disgrace. Russia battalion to the rescue. Hurry. Oui, mon general. Find a new hangman, I reckon. So your Huron friends turned you loose, did they? Why, even you can't believe that, Captain. We broke out, fought free of the Hurons, and followed you. For what purpose? The same as your own man. You don't think you can rescue Miss Marion alone, do you? Possibly not. All right. But I want it understood the first chance I get, I'll turn you over to the army. Very well, Johnny Bull. But let's leave it at that. Oh! Hey, canoe. Go by shore. Well, they can't go far by water. He doesn't dare go near the French, they'll hang him. We can pick up their tracks along the shore. They're heading for the nearest Huron village. Ogana, great chief. Kill Yengis. Take. Many scalp. Make fire. You choose. Ogana or fire. Take squaw to marriage hut. 
Huron, Lake Fire, they're married. Girl, in hut, stockade, close by. Show me the hut site. Wait a minute. This is my affair. Why yours more than mine? Be sensible, man. I've known and loved Marion Thorne for years. And the lady? I don't know. Well, until you find out, let's handle this my way. Well, you wouldn't stand a chance going through that stockade unseen, Captain. Stick here and cover us. And if we get through, we'll circle around and meet you by the river. All right. things in my life. Our only chance is with you. Go! Here I'm coming. Take the captain down the high river bank. We'll meet you around the big bend.
Hawkeye. Tell him brother's tomahawk. Good medicine. Whether we ever get out of this or not, I want you to know how sorry I am for ever doubting you. How could you help it, ma'am? It was in the book that way. Well, I don't blame you for feeling like that. I wonder you even bother to save my life. That shouldn't be too hard to figure out, Marion. Captain. Where's the Sagamore? He's back on the trail. Where I'd be but for him. He sent you this. Said it was good medicine for brother. I... I couldn't owe my life to a better man. And that's our first agreement, Captain. We've only one chance left. Through the woods to the French lines. Indian camp. The ashes are still warm. You'll have to sign for another party to follow. Their Ottawa's not yours. What's the difference? They're both fighting for the French. Yeah, but there's no love lost between them. This may be the chance we need. Come on. not French. Why has man come? We claim protection of the French chief. Take us to him. No. Yangis claim protection, man come. You say no. Why? This woman mine. Yangis steal her. True. The Huron speaks with double tongue. Your white father, Montcalm, hunts for the Huron now to hang him by the neck for the ravens to eat. Why? For stealing this woman, daughter of Yankee's chief at Fort Williams. We were sent to bring her back. Long rifles speak lie. This woman mine. You're on law. Only law I know. Ottawa law. Then give one of us the right, under your Ottawa law, to fight the Huron for her. Which? Yankee's squaw. Choose. Yankee's woman, white warrior, fight Huron. Here on die, you all go free. Man come. Which white man you choose? No, I can't. Well, I can. My sword against his tommyhawk. Wait a minute. Let the arrow decide, Chief. Long rifle warrior, no much of order war law. Give arrow. Which end you choose? The feather. Arrow 
have decided you fight Huron. Blow us truck yet. Do all of us fight men already wounded? Like you're on cowards? You see. This gash in your shoulder, Captain, you took in too much territory. It's a habit with Englishmen. You're a good man, Johnny Bull. Easy now. All right, Organa. It's you and me. Good medicine, Sagamore. Your knife. Thanks, Chief. And one couldn't ask for fairer treatment, sir. 
Montcalm not only sent all our survivors safely through his lines, but he urged me to extend his profound apologies for the behavior of his Hurons. Let's hope we may soon have the opportunity of returning the curtsy. What about this Cutler matter? Exonerated, sir. Both Cutler and his brother. In fact, we have Cutler to thank for ridding us of the Frenchman's most effective secret agent, Captain Brownell. Brownell? Our quartermaster? In reality, Captain Edouard Brunel of Montcalm's 5th Regiment. A Frenchman educated in England and trained for intelligence work in our service. And Cutler disposed of him? In self-defense, sir. Well, it seems we owe you more than thanks, Cutler. I wonder, uh, <laughs> but I suppose you've had about enough of us and I can't say that I blame you. Well, I don't know, General. I hear that Captain West is going back out in the woods again. He's got to have somebody to cook his cornbread for him, you know. He means, sir. I've sent in a request that he be made chief scout of my new battalion. Consider it approved. Thank you, sir. There's your assembly, Captain. Goodbye, and good luck. Blackley! Well, it's all right! Bye, Marianne. Hope you get your new book finished by the time we get back. And remember, folks like a happy ending. This can't have a happy ending. Unless you come back to me, Hawkeye. Chief Scout Cutler. Fall in. 